Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's ePay Tips and Changes webinar for the week of January 11th. Now, as we go through today's session, as we do in all our webinars, we do ask that um, you ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question area of the control panel, and I'll address those at the appropriate time during our conversations today. As always, everyone on this call is muted, just for uh, to make it easy for everyone else to understand and kind of listen in. Um, so please, use the, the question area if there are any questions that should arise during uh, today's session. Now for our webinar today, um, as it was outlined in our ePay update that was sent out on Monday to each and every one of you, um, we have a couple topics we want to talk about. All of them really re revolve around the recent upgrade changes that occurred last uh, last week on the 6th. And um, it, it's Essentially, what we're going to go through today is the changes in the job and employee profile views. You'll notice that there's a few um, few differences if you go into ePay and actually look at that, uh, those two screens. Um, some things have changed, so we're going to go through those. I'm going to introduce you to the uh, concept of granular security. And I put a woohoo there because many of you on this call are going to be very, uh, very happy and pleasantly surprised when we go through that little section. Um, after that, we're going to go through the uh, changes in the um, time card view and timesheet view. And uh, actually, one thing I'm going to leave off of this call that I would actually covered on Tuesday, but we're not going to do it today, um, is the exclusive rate type. So I'm going to bring that up in a whole other conversation for uh, uh, so we can have a better, longer, a lengthy uh, explanation and time to talk about that. So we're going to go through those as our today's topics. So let's get right into the first topic, which is the uh, changes in the job profile view. And as I do in all my webinars, I'll go through this. I'll go through some slides, and I'll actually log into uh, Blue Force and actually show you these and do a little more explanation um, live. Now, the first uh, big change is the uh, job site profile view. And for for those who have logged into Blue Force and I actually, you know, try to go and take a little test drive of the system, and actually logged in and and went into the job record, you may have noticed that the screen here looks completely different. Now, one of the things that's new uh, with this uh, upgrade, and once again, the upgrade just was mostly visual items, and uh, they added a few kind of back-end items for us to be able to uh, provide more access to security and whatnot. But uh, bottom line, the way the screen works is every section here, and I'm going to point this out with my arrow, is uh, broken out. So that way you now have different sections of the screen and, and separated tabs at the bottom of the screen. Now one thing that you'll notice is these little blocks of information. And this is something I'll call into a little more detail here momentarily when we talk about the uh, granular security and what that is. Now the job site prof profile, you'll notice it looks a little different. Same thing as your employee profile view. Um, in both cases, you will notice that they do have little blocks of information. Now, one thing that comes to mind, and I'll uh, point this out again here in a little bit, are the colors. So notice that you have the oranges um, um, in parts of the screen. Other areas are in blue, or light blue uh, shaded areas. Now, the difference between the two, and this goes into the granular security part, is that the orange areas are going to be areas that you cannot go in there and have access to see. Uh, more than that, it's not steering, but uh, access to ch and making changes or edits to. Uh, the blue areas are going to be areas where you can actually go and make changes, additions, and stuff of that nature. So in both the job and profile view, one of the things that's come, that, that came out of this upgrade that was very positive for all of us is the concept of granular security. So I'll come back to this slide here momentarily, but let's go in and let me explain to you what, what it is. So the quick question is, is, what is it and how does it affect me? So granular security basically gives you new controls and edit rights on both the Blue Force employee and job site profiles. So that basically means that I can now go in there and do things I couldn't do before, or maybe do things that I was able to do a year ago when I first started uh, using the uh, ePay and Blue Force, and since then things have changed that have limited me to doing that. So now you have more access and more control. It gives you more flexibility to assist with your day-to-day -day role as an editor, submitter, and approver. So when is this thing going to go into play and when are we going to do this? So the, the goal is for me to turn it on over the weekend. Um, and uh, it's actually intact, ready to go. Just we, uh, we want to make sure everything is set up and ready to roll. So we're going to wait till the weekend and turn that on. And um, 
we're going to go through here. I'm going to show you some of the cool things you're going to be able to do now with granular security. So the very first thing that comes to mind and the first, uh, the first you know, big part of this is, you know, what exactly can I edit? You know, you're telling me you can edit, uh, you can make some changes, give me more control. So what exactly can I do? So one of the things I want to reiterate before we go any further is the edit capability screen again. So once again, keep in mind that the any any place in the ePay, ePay or sorry, Blue Force employee record or the Blue Force job record, anywhere you see orange um, areas that kind of lead the box that you're looking at or on the tab itself, those orange areas are no edit capabilities, meaning you, you can't edit those items. And obviously for good reason. Uh, personal details at the top of this screen for the employee includes their name. Uh, payroll information includes their payroll number, pay group, all that good stuff. All this stuff that's in orange should reside and should start off in JDE. So nothing's really changed there for anybody other than, you know, if you want to see something here and you, or if you want to go and try to edit something and you see that it's incorrect, um, you have to keep in mind those orange areas mm -hmm. are driven from JDE and actually reside in JDE. So we want to correct that there first. And then kind of our general process for those who are not familiar how everything works is once those items are corrected in JDE, within the next 30 minutes, we have an interface that actually will pick up that change and drop it into Blue Force for you. So that's why we always maintain, say, that everything starts and for the most part, everything ends in JDE. Now, the blue areas do have edit capabilities. So those blue areas, um, which I'll, I know some of you are probably like snickering already, <laughs> but some of those blue areas that you'll see on the screen, uh, and this example is just a tab at the bottom of the window, those areas you will be able to go in there and actually do some edits. And edits being, in this case, for example, the working job tab is what's shown on the screen here. You can actually add jobs now to, to an employee's profile, working jobs, jobs that they can actually clock in and out of. Um, other things you'll be able to do is go in there and maintain and, and edit the auto split functionalities that are in the system. So I'll explain all this in a little bit more detail what those, those editable areas are, um, but um, um, this just this, the screen will just give you a good overview of what is to come and what is able, you'll be able to do. So going right into what exactly I can edit. So one of the things, you can, there's my woohoo moment. Um, one of the things you can do and edit now is the employee profile. So the employee profile, you will be able to go in there and uh, edit your working jobs, like I mentioned. So once again, that controls what jobs an employee can work, work at. So there's no need to uh, contact myself or Tiandra to go through here and, uh, and um, set up working jobs for you. You could actually maintain those yourself. And once again, working jobs allow the employee to clock in and clock out of key jobs. So if, if the employee does not have a job in the, listed under their working jobs currently, that means that that employee, when they go to that job site and try to clock in from that device, the Walter that's there, or go to phone in and try to key in that job number, they're not going to be able. To, they're not able to. But with this functionality now, you will be able to add those additional jobs and allow them to be able to clock in successfully. The default shift and tasks. You'll be able to now see those default shifts and tasks, but also more importantly, go in there and edit and change those as needed. One of the things that comes up all the time is you know. Uh, from, from, from a time card and payroll standpoint is that an employee clocks in and whomever's overseeing their payroll always wonders, you know, why are they clocking into the wrong uh, task? Why is, it, why, are they, you know, why is it saying they are a carpet tech, they're supposed to be a custodian? Or why is it saying they, should be a, they are a, uh, a supervisor <laughs> when they're supposed to be a crew member? Um, a variety of different reasons like that, but behind that is the shift and task, and that kind of that is driven and actually goes through and drives down to the GL level come come payroll time. So we want to make sure that the default shift and task are correct, so that the employee, if they fail to enter a task if prompted or um, on the device, one of the devices uh, means of clocking in and clocking out, or the system doesn't prompt them, what's going to happen is they're going to be tagged with this default task that's assigned to their record. And sometimes it's correct and sometimes it's not. Um, we do have a few instances out there where the records were not correct. But basically, that also drive, is driven from JDE initially. So um, if they're set up wrong now in EPA or, EPA or Blue Force, you want to make sure that those are also correct in JDE. But we'll go through that here in a little bit. PTO. 
one of the things we can do now is you can actually, we've, we've always been able to do this. Um, we've had a lot of you on this phone call today come on and ask for um, the functionality to track PTO in BlueForce. So many of you do that manually, and that's perfectly fine. But if we can do it in the system, it's, it's, it's recommended we let the system track that for us. So one of the functionalities you can do now is you'll be able to go in there and track that PTO. You can go in there and set up balances for each employee. You can go in there and see the differences as they actually use that time, whether it be them actually clocking and clocking out to that particular rate type or you specifically adding vacation and sick and you know bereavement and birthday, all the special you know, um, PTO instances we have around the country. Um, you can actually see the balances as they are subtracted in, in their employee profile. Now to that as well, uh, we can actually do a mass load of those balances for you and that's something that I won't spend too much on this call about, but if that's something you are, in, are interested in doing and you want us to load a, a mass upload um, balances for you, reach out to either myself or Tiandra and uh, we can actually go through and give you more information about how to do that um, in, into the system. Block calendar. Block calendar is going to allow us the functionality to go in there and have the well, block out time for the employee. So if the employee requests some time off and they're going to be out or maybe they're out for a doctor's appointment, they're going to be out for a couple hours or maybe they're going to be out for a couple days, weeks, whatever it may be, you can go in there and block their calendar. And what that does, it allows the scheduling module, which actually works with that particular tab, to not schedule them or not make them available to be scheduled um, on those given days. So you can actually use it one of two ways. You can just note, it, note the days they're going to be out or go to the next step and actually link it up with that scheduling module. Now, on the side note, for those that um, were on the call uh, yesterday, I had a call uh, on Blue Force Scheduling, which I briefly talked about that, but we'll also have another session on Blue Force Scheduling here in about a little under two weeks that we'll uh, bring that up in there. So if you want to see more about that or know more about the block calendar uh, outside this call, that's probably the opportunity for you to... Uh, to join in. Auto split. Auto split allows us to now go in there and tell the system um, we have an employee that works maybe five different jobs, but it's a really a really a pain for that employee to clock in and clock out each of those jobs. Is there any way that we can get the system to go in and essentially split spread the time out uh, for that employee on a daily basis? And that is what auto split does. The only requirement that the employee would need to do is have the employee clock in and clock out using one of the time collection methods, the system will then actually come back here and say, you know what, we have this employee clocking into this, this one job. However, the auto split says take their time and split it out amongst, you know, five jobs. So we can actually, via um, percentages, and this has to be off of percentages, we can tell the system split out that total time um, equally maybe or, um, you know, 20% here, 10% here, 5% here, whatever it may be. But based on those percentages we tell the system, we can split that time that they've actually accumulated for that work day. So I'll go into that a little bit later on the article today. I'll show you how to use that and maybe set that up pretty quickly. And then qualifications. Um, I think only our security division is the only one using the qualifications, but that basically allows you to go in there and note any certifications, any, any requirements an employee needs to, to have in order to be able to go to work at a site or, or their job for that particular day, whatever it may be. But qualifications allows you to track that information and expiration dates and all that good stuff. So that is, uh, those are the couple items that you'll be able to do now on the employee profile. Now as far as the job profile is concerned, you can go in there and actually set up phone-in numbers. For those that use the phone-in system, the uh, toll-free call-in um, time collection system we use, you can actually now go in there and, and set up those phone-in numbers yourself. So there's no need to wait for Tiander or myself to go through and do that for you. You'll be able to go in there and maintain that yourselves. Now, holiday and exception dates. Holiday and exception dates will allow you to also go in there and note what holidays are coming up for a job, many of which Weaver, uh, Tiander and myself have set up for you guys. But you can actually go through and maintain those and actually add your own holiday and exception dates. Um, the cool thing about that is many of you during the last this pre, pre, last holiday of the Christmas and New Year's had a lot of time entry, manual time, have to go in there and add holidays or change rate types to holiday because people work the holiday, whatever it may be. What we can do is part of the holiday and exception dates tab 
you can go in there and tell the system that if someone works on Christmas Day, as an example, um, instead of being clocked in as regular time, have the system automatically convert that rate type to holiday 2x, maybe double time, uh, maybe holiday time and a half, whatever it may be. Um, so that way, when it comes payroll time, there's no extra work on your end. Your, the system already recognizes that someone worked this day. When they work this day, it means that they're going to use this rate type instead of regular, and we're done. So stuff like that, I'm going to show you that a little bit here in this call as well. But these are some new items with via this new granular security that ePay has provided us that you will now be able to go in and maintain yourself. So let's go through. I'm going to go through these, just uh, go through some slides of each of these points real quick. And then we'll go through and actually demo these as well for you. All right. So just real quick on the real discussion, one of the points was uh, the working jobs tab. So on the working jobs tab here, one of the cool things that you'll see here is that you have this assign functionality right in the middle of the screen. What the purpose of this tab is, you can act, easily go in and control an employee's working jobs by using that assign button that's there in the middle of the screen. So as I go through here, let me go ahead and demo this real quick for you. So give me one second. And let me uh, log in to Blue Force here for you. And what we'll do is we'll actually demo this one piece as I show the slide. And then we'll uh, um, let me log in here. All right. So one of the things is as you log in, the same thing, nothing's going to change as far as your access or logging in, logging out, the process there, it's all the same. But when you log in and you actually now try to go to an employee record, you're still going to get, um, you're still going to go and see the same list of employees that you currently have access to. In my case, up here at the top of the screen, I have a um, listing of uh, access of 2,500 plus employees. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of these so I can show you what exactly is going to occur. I'm going to pick on Edward's record here. So now, that, now you notice when you go into the system, the granular security is showing you the kind of the breakout. And for most of you on the phone call today, your security, um, actually your screen is going to look very similar to this in color, in the color scheme. <clears throat> you're going to see the oranges. You're going to see the blues. It's perfectly uh, normal. But the one thing I want to talk about first here is the working jobs tab down here at the bottom of the screen. So if you focus down here at the bottom of the screen, and what I'll do for everyone is I'll just circle and make sure we're all on the same page. This tab is what's going to drive um, that employee's ability to clock in and out of different jobs. So here's the scenario. An employee, employee is normally working, um, working a couple jobs on a regular basis, but tonight you have to have them cover another site. Now currently, the process would be is you would call, you would probably get a hold of myself or Tiandra and would have to quickly try to move them over so that way they can be ready for the night. Or you don't have them clock into that job and you do that manually, which we're trying to get away from. We want every employee to be able to control their punch ins and punch outs. So what you can do in advance of them showing up for work is strictly just come down here to the working job tab and let me clear my circle here. All you are going to do here is you're going to go to the Working Jobs tab. You're going to go, first off, you're going to make sure it's the employee you want up at the top of the screen. But I'm going to come down to the very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and, and either search for the job I want to add via any of these avenues. Okay? If you know the job number or job ID, they're the same, one and the same, I can go in there and key it in. Okay? If I know it, great. If I don't know it, but I know it starts with a 5 and I don't know what the, what the job number is, I can just hit go, put a 5 there, hit go. And the system is going to pull up all the jobs that match that criteria. So you see all the ones that start with five. Okay. Now for Edward here, um, you know, I can pick the job that I need. Um, so I'm going to say he's going to work over at uh, 1018 Preston. And once I look for that job and I hit assign, it's going to pop over and you're going to now notice it on the right hand side. Now when I see it down here on the right hand side, this is letting me know that it has added this job for me. You also notice that that job is no longer available on the left-hand side anywhere, where it was originally. So if you do a search on this particular tab and you can't find that job number, stop and just regroup a little bit and go over to the right-hand side and make sure it's not already assigned to that particular employee. Now, one of the questions that came up on last call is, you know, how does working jobs get 
how do these working jobs get uh, assigned to start with? They get assigned to start with because everyone, every employee has a, a um, field on their JDE, as J.D. Edwards, employee record that's called assignment type. Okay? If you have a certain assignment type, that is going to drive what jobs come over here. So if you have a job assignment type, um, you're only going to see the default job that you have assigned to your employee record. And for those that are um, may have already noticed, the default job is listed right above, at the, halfway down on my screen here. And it's actually grayed out here, but that default job comes from JDE. So a job assignment type will net you just that one job down here at the bottom of the, uh, just that one job would show up down here in working jobs. Now, if you are a district assignment type, you're going to get all the jobs that are, are in the corresponding district that this employee works. Okay. Now, for those that are not familiar with that, let me erase my screen here. Um, the district, and it's I'm probably not going to have an example here on this particular um, example, but um, nevertheless, we have a uh, export a field that will show you that district. And this is my test record, so this doesn't come from JD, but um, you will have it available to see what district is as well within the employee record. But nevertheless. A district assignment type pulls in all the jobs for a particular district. We also have an area assignment type on JDE that sends every job in the company or area, which basically means the city you're in, um, to Blue Force. It makes that available for that employee. Now, should, like I said, at, at the last minute, you have to make some changes, move around employee uh, jobs from employees, uh, employees run from job to job, you can actually go through and add them like I just did. And as soon as you add it here and click on save, it's going to actually save your information and it's going to be live. So the system all now knows and now recognizes that an employee were to call in from phone in, where they would use Web Punch, which is the uh, online version, or they were supposed to use the uh, mobile punch off the smartphone, their job is now active and immediately available. So they could actually call you on the fly and actually be at the job site. You add it here and boom, they're ready to go. Clock in and clock out and proceed on your way. Now, the only thing I did not mention here was the Walter devices. Now, the Walters have to be synced. So at any point you make any changes to this working job, the Walter devices must be synced in order to pull down this change for the employee to be able to clock in on those Walter devices. At the same point, if the employee has not been registered before um, in, our in our system, um, the employee would have to be registered on the clock to be able to um, punch in and punch out. Um, other than that, um, that is a working job. It's a very uh, working job tab. It's a very simple tab to use. It's going to probably save a lot of you a lot of time um, by able to quickly manage this in and out. Now, on the reverse side, if that employee works temporarily on that one job and you don't want that job ever available to them again, come back to the middle, hit remove, save again, and the changes are done. So I can actually do that with any of these. If I want to go through here and just remove a couple of these, I can remove them also, and it kind of maintains, you're kind of maintaining that record. So just keep that in mind. It's a new functionality we have available for you that you can do all the work here within Blue Force. All right. Next tab, let me go back to my slide. If they are not prompted, then the system has no other way of knowing um, what tasks they're working other than taking their default task. So that's what typically the question becomes is, you know, how, why is this employee always getting coded to this task when they're working a whole different task? That is the reason why. Um, same thing with the phone-in device. 
If they call, they um, and I think for the most part, every location should be prompted for that, use, that uses phone in, which is our call in system, should be prompting the employee at the very last prompt um, where they want to call, um, what task they want to work. Now, phone in will work a little different when you are prompted for some for for a choice and you do not enter it. Then the system then goes through and says, well, if you're not going to enter that, then I can't accept your punch. So the system doesn't punch them in. So that's one of the things with the task on the phone in side is if they do not answer that question and when it's prompted to them, the system will say, well, I can't associate your punch to anything, therefore I can't clock you in. So keep that in mind. I just want to throw that out there too because most a lot of you are already aware of that. But for those that weren't, it's just kind of a little quick update um, on how that process works. So regardless, you, the employee does have the ability to control um, which, uh, you know, um, which way they want to clock in and kind of which what task they want to clock into. So let me go back in, uh, go back to my um, screen here, and let me clear these uh, areas. And I'm going to go to the default shift and task. It's right next to the uh, working job tab. And one of the things that occurs here, just keep in mind, is as you work from tab to tab, make sure you're saving your work. So a little while ago, I didn't save my changes, but you want to make sure that if you want to make those changes reflect immediately, you want to hit save. So in this case here, my my uh, my employee here, Edward, has um, yeah, has quite a few jobs he's working at. Okay, So if I go through here, you'll notice your jobs are listed here on the left-hand side. And your default tasks are listed right here. Now, these default tasks actually in, begin in JD as well. And what we've done is every job, when they're set up, they actually have a task type, uh, kind of a task model that's associated to them. So for those that are on the phone call here that are strictly working from um, one of our base janitorial sites, you're pretty much the only tasks that you're going to see here are going to be cleaning related. Uh, those from our landscape division that are on the phone call today are going to see landscape related tasks. And those from our IFS division, you're the lucky ones. You might see a, a hodgepodge of different tasks from all over the different types of models just because you're a more diverse group in the services you provide. Um, but regardless, look at the screen here. If I wanted to go in right now and clock in at Carlisle Condominiums under Edward uh, Kazina here, and um, let's say Edward decided that um, um, he wasn't going to – he. he First off, he that clocked in and prompted him for a, a task. Once he goes in and punches in, it's the system's all making to record this particular task type of SS window other. Now that might be right, that might be incorrect, but that is where it's driving that task from. So keep that in mind. You will now be able to have visibility to see this and make edits as needed to the proper task. All right. So um Let's see. Let us go over to the next, well, the next, the next tab, which is going to be the personal um, time off tab. And a personal or PTO tab, what that does for us, it gives us the flexibility now to go in and um, essentially track employees' time off. The example here, and this is probably not the best example for a screenshot here, but I'm going to show you this in a live demo momentarily. The system will be able to track any, any rate type that's deemed as PTO in the system. And you notice that this example, this employee has vacation, sick, and holiday. Now, the way this works, even if you don't go in here and um, set this up per se, you can go to any employee record, and you're going to have this little PTO balance section ready to go for you. This example was never set up. The system all Maggie did it for us because the minute someone started being coded to PTO, the system all Maggie went in there and started taking care of the used amount of time. So the system knows that it, this, we used 40 hours of vacation, we used um, 16 hours of sick leave, and we used 48, 48 hours of holiday non-work. So we've got this balance is already there for you. The part that you can come in here is you can come here and make sure you added the uh, proper amount of times, uh, uh, proper num hours, a uh, number of hours to be allocated for the particular um, PTO, uh, BTO. So basically, load the initial balance. 
So that's why you have negatives here in this particular screen. It's telling you that the employee owes us 40, 40 hours because we never put in an opening balance for that employee. But the cool thing about this is if you ever, ever have any question or wondering, you know, when did an employee take holiday or uh, when did they take a personal day? When did they go have jury duty? When did they have um, anything that's considered PTO? You can actually come back here and you have a PTO history section that will note that every time and every job that the employee worked at or was coded to for that PTO scenario, it's going to be shown there. It's also going to tell you how it was entered in the system. In most cases, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that we're always going to enter it um, via the uh, time card or time sheet views. Okay. So that's pretty much it. At the very bottom, you have the allocate area where you can actually go and allocate those hours and actually basically create these, these uh, opening balances for the employee. So there will be a, for, a more formal document. That's what I'm going to go through right now and show you what you will be able to do. Um, but one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, as my, my introduction to this section, was that we can actually load in mass all of the PTO balances for you. And some of you on a phone call that have taken – taken, uh, taken, um, um, advantage of that so far. And basically what we will do is if you're interested in doing that, like I said, let us know. But uh, more important, what we'll do is we'll send you a spreadsheet. On the spreadsheet, it's really just three columns we need. It's going to be the employee ID, the job that they're going to uh, be basically coding this, time, this uh, holiday time to or PTO time to, and the number of hours to be allocated for that. And um, Actually, it's not even the job. I'll take it back. It's just the number of hours and the effective date. So there's really just three things I need. And uh, once we get that information and you have you fill out the spreadsheet in that format that we need it in, um, we take it back and we import it in the system. So that way you can have balances pretty uh, quickly and uh, you're able to do stuff with that. Now, one of the questions I got here is, you know, how do I, you know, I have these balances in here and now how do I export them into the system or export them out of the system? Well, right now, there really is no export. Um, there are some reports that we can uh, provide this information on, um, but there is a way of getting that out if that, that, that's addressed. We can uh, go through and uh, provide that for you. Um, so let me, let me stop here real fast. Let me go back out of here and go back into um, my login here, and I'm going to go to the PTO tab. Okay. So this is what the PTO tab looks at the bottom of the screen here. Um, this example is a little bit more robust because I have uh, a few more other options here. But you can actually see kind of how everything occurs. Now, at any point, if I were to start a new balance for a particular rate type, for example, uh, sick leave, um, you'll notice here that sick leave is shown twice. But the difference is once um, I loaded a new balance, the first one right here was um, basically inactivated, and then the new uh, recording or new balances kicked into and kicked into gear, so you can actually always see where you are at um, as far as the balances for your variety of different pay, uh, PTO related scenarios. So once again, I, I urge you if you, this is something that really interests you, get get going on this because right now we're still at the beginning of the year that we can actually um, this can be very beneficial for us if we wait, you know, till mid year to try to start doing this, um, it's a little harder to catch up and get those balances in in in. Uh, fine-tuned. All right, so let me get to see. I have a few more questions. Make sure I've answered those. Um, all righty, so I've got a couple questions, so let me go back and, and make sure I've answered these. So um, first question is, what is it they've already taken PTO for this year? Not a problem. The way this the screen at the very top works, the PTO balances kick off in the current year based on that first instance of taking PTO. So if someone took PTO on, let's say, today, the 14th of January, what's going to happen is you're going to see an entry that's going to say effective from 14th of January 16, uh, 2016, and it's going to have a negative balance probably of eight hours if they took eight hours. What we can do then is go in there and edit that line. We can't change the effective date because the system says the first entry in the system is on the 14th, so we have to start with the 14th being the effective date. But they have not taken anything else this year, so we're still good to go ahead and adjust that balance going forward. So it doesn't matter if they've taken uh, PTO for this year. It's just going to show the effective date a little off at the very top, but it's not going to affect anything other than that. One of the things we probably need to do is and prepare, and you know, we're still you know, 11 months, 10 months away from doing this, but 
um, for preparation for next year, you probably want to start this process probably a little earlier. And um, um, not a biggie. Um, this is our first time, first go around going through with all of us being new on Blue Force. So um, we'll, we'll take steps to prepare and make sure we'll start right on the first of the year next year. Um, let's see. All right, so I've got um, another question is, you know, can, um, let's see, we've got some of the export questions, so we'll get that going. All right, so the, the other question is, the PTO is changing to one category. Should we wait to send the spreadsheet to upload? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the PTO is changing to one category, but this screen does not look at a particular category. It looks at the specific PTO rate type itself. So each rate type that we set up in the system is denoted as either being PTO or not PTO related. If they are PTO related, then the system will automatically track it as PTO in here, regardless of however else you're doing stuff on any other means. So um, this is strictly looking at the type, the way that we set up the rate type, and when you use that rate type, it, it, it uh, does the balances accordingly. So if you're interested in doing that spreadsheet upload, uh, it doesn't, that wouldn't matter. We could still get that going. And then the last question I've got here is, you know, will the system flag or alert if a lot of PTOs have been used? Well, one of the things this will do is not going to send you a, um, there is an alert, first off, it can be set up to send you. Um, it's not going to flash on the screen. It's not going to go, you know, you know, give you anything visual. Um, but there is an alert that can be uh, noted in the system that can be sent out to you. Um, otherwise, you can always have a balance sheet here. Um, and there are some reports out there that you can actually keep and fine tune just to kind of see where the balances are. And um, oh, and then someone uh, and I'll just say I'll just say I don't want to say names, but Kathy, thank you for sending that. Um, she noted that there's no longer for her for her area there's no longer vacation sick or PTO. It's just strictly all in one big bucket called PTO, which is perfectly fine. Um, what we want to do is maybe after the call, drop me a note, um, and whether it be today or tomorrow, let's talk about that specifically because we want to make sure if, if it's just going to be one bucket, let's fix that in Blue Force as well. That way we don't have to break it out into different buckets like between vacation, sick, personal. Let's just be one big, one uh, clump of uh, time. But we can fix that on our end. Um, so that, that that's the same thing with some other questions I've had. So it's, Apparently, there's a change in the employee handbook that says it's just PTO now, so we can address that as needed and actually make this show up correctly. All righty, so let's move on to our next uh, screen, and uh, let me get my screen back to order. All right, the next screen is basically the block calendar tab. So one of the things you can do here is you have the functionality now and flexibility to go through and tell the system, an employee is not going to be available from this start date to this start date, which basically blocks out um, a set number of days. It can also block out set hours. So on here you'll see you have a start time and end time. You can actually tell the system, you know, this employee is not available between 2 and 5 today. So that way if you ever want to use, or you want it for your reference, you have a record there. But more importantly, if you want to use this and actually use the scheduling module, the scheduling module will not let you schedule somebody within that particular time frame that you've blocked out. So this is all just a kind of informational tab, but it does do some benefits if you're using that scheduling module to your benefit. And then the next one, I'm going to demo this one, the auto split tab, which is pretty cool for those that are using it. Um, it allows you to split time automatically for an employee. Now what I mean by that is if you look at this particular example on the screen, this employee um, yeah, I guess this, this employee has two jobs a part of their auto split. And what it's saying is the employee will go to job one, will go to one of these jobs, clock in from that job site, do their work, you know, maybe a couple hours here, a couple hours there, go to the other job site, do a couple hours there, and then they will clock out. Now in, in total, at that time, let's say he worked four hours at each site, the employee could have easily clocked in and clocked out at each site. Um, and we'd have been happy, or they could have just clocked in at one of these sites, 
done all the work between the two sites and then simply clocked out. And the system, based on the day of the week, you know, as each day of the week has uh, certain numbers in it. But let's say he went, it was on, it was Tuesday, okay? If he went, actually gone into that job, what his jobs clocked in, clocked out, and it was a Tuesday, we have the system set up right now to break out that total time. 50% of that total time will go to the first job, which is 5, 5021115, and 50% of that time will go to the second job, 5021154. Now, what AutoSplit does, it just gives you the flexibility of instead of having an employee to go, who may, and this works exceptionally well for those employees that basically work 5, 6, 7, 10 different sites a night. Um, they may put in 30 minutes at a site. And sometimes it doesn't make sense for them to clock in and clock out every where they go. Um, it does good because you you have some other flexibility or other items that you can do with them clocking in and clocking out. Or maybe you don't have the flexibility of of having a phone or a clock in device at each of those sites either. So what you would be able to do is have that employee clock in to one of the jobs listed on AutoSplit. And once again, that's the criteria. They must clock in. And they must clock into a job that's listed on this auto split setup. And once they call in from that job, the system automatically knows to start paying attention to the auto split rules for that particular day. Now, if for some reason this, this particular example on the screen, this employee only worked um, works these two jobs, but only um, let's say that one of the employees, uh, sorry, this employee went to these jobs on Monday and worked, um, clocked in at one of these jobs, clocked out. Notice that Monday on the screen here, and let me go ahead and erase my uh, my markings here. But you'll notice there on Monday, Monday has zeros for those jobs. In those cases where there's no auto split set up for that given day, the employee's time would go to whatever job he or she clocked in. So they didn't clock in and clock out to all these different jobs they worked that night, and just simply clocked into one job, then all that time goes to that one job. So auto split has that flexibility that you would set it up on the days that you want this auto split to be active. And the only other scenario here would be an employee clocks in on, uh, let's say, on Wednesday in this case. And on Wednesday, he clocks in to a job that's not listed on here. So let's say there's a third job that he's working that's not on this list, and it's fi job 5010001. Well, if he clocks into that job, it's not listed on auto split. The system knows not to touch it and I'm basically leave the time as is. Therefore, on Wednesday, although we have an auto split between two jobs here, since that job he clocked into is not on the auto split, the uh, employee's time would go to that job that he clocked into. So those kind of the three scenarios that are out there for auto split, but you will now have access to doing that. Right now, during myself maintain this for many of you, um, but you'll be able to go in there now and maintain that yourself and get that active for uh, those employees that need it. Now, once again, this auto split, I should gotta make it clear, it's not a way to circumvent the system. It's not a way for the employee to not clock in. Um, essentially, the employee still has to clock in in order for this to work. So if you're thinking, oh, I can just go in there and just key in some time and hopefully let that flow through and it'll, it'll pick up the auto split, doesn't work that way. The employee must uh, clock in through one of the collect time collection devices at one of the sites listed under the auto split. All right, so real fast, I'm going to show you that setup, how to do that. It's a real quick process. Um, I can actually go into auto split here. Um, and all I'm going to do here is to very, to very simple to set one up here. This example shows a 90 10 split on 90% uh, of the time on one, one job, 10% on the other job for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If I wanted to go and add another row, I just click on Add Row. I go in here, let's say on Thursday, I work a different job. And I want 50% of my time for Thursday to go there. Save. And then I want to add another row, possibly. Oh, I have an error because of my of my access here. It's not set up correctly. But it's very simple like that. I would go in here and just add row. And then um, um, once I add that row, I can actually go in and um, add my auto split. Now, whatever shows on here in this grid, the key thing here is you have one little flag that at any point you decide, you know, I have this set up, but I don't want it to work anymore, or vice versa. 
This little is active checkbox must be checked in order for auto split to work. So there'll be I'll, I have a full document that I've been working on that I'll send out and make sure it's available for next for you next week on an auto split to make sure that you're able to um, follow the steps of how to set this up. Very simple thing to do, um, but it actually uh, does very good uh, uh, for you whenever you're in here to actually track it. I get your time uh, recorded properly. All right, so let's go over to the next uh, tab, and it's going to be the qualifications tab, which is right here on the far right hand side. And um, the qualification tab, and um, there really is nothing more to that. Um, no one's really using it, but this is an area where you can actually go in there and track um, people's qualifications. So one of the questions I had earlier that I did not answer until I'm going to answer right now is, you know, can I go in here and enter a driver license or ID with expiration dates and will the system alert me uh, when that's expired? So one of the things about this is that you're going to notice here that I can go in here and create qualifications. Um, one of them I can call a driver license if I want to. Um, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is there's really not much data, no much uh, date um, or text fields. You can go here and key in extra stuff other than we set up a qualification called driver's license or qualify, uh, qualification called hazmat or um, qualification called pepper, pepper spray training, you know, whatever the different ones, um, you know, different trains we have for different, uh, different types of lines of business we have in the company. Um, that would be the option. You pick that up. Then we put in a date range down at the bottom. And the system would uh, be able to notify you. We could create a report that would have that information readily available for you. Um, there is not an alert per se that all like, it pops up, but whenever you try to do anything with that qualification, it's going to give you a little nasty ground letting you know that it's about to expire or that it is indeed expired. So um, other than that, there really is no major visual. It's just a way here to track that information. All right, so let's go back to my uh, slides here and um, let's go over to the uh, job profile. And we'll kind of wrap up our discussions today. But our job profile here is going to be very simple. It allows us to go in there and basically make two changes, either to the phone in and time clock setup tab, which is shown here, or holiday and exceptions, as I mentioned. So this first tab here, I can go in and enter our phone in phone numbers. So any numbers where, where we would want our employees to call in from should be recorded here. And the benefit of having the number here is you immediately allow you to be able to track that and for those that are not familiar I won't be going through all the detail right now in this call but from the time card screen if you ever go in and notice that some of your time for your phone in users is in black when you go to that time card screen it's a black background with green lettering that's letting you know they called in from phone in but that black background is telling you that you need approval so for those that are not aware of that black anytime you see a black background in your time card that's letting you know that Something's not right. In this case, for phone in, the employee called in from, successfully punched in and punched out probably, but they called in from a number that was unauthorized. So where did they call in from? They call in from their phone number, uh, from the personal phone, their home phone, their cell phone, their another, build, another phone in the building. You have that track capability. And in that time card details, if you ever go to details, which I'll mention here a little bit again um, in a few slides down, you can actually see the detail for where that employee called in from. So you'll be able to go in there and see that the employee actually called in from 210-491-6400 versus 210-491-6021. So you have visibility to that. So use this screen to your advantage. If you're using the phone in, we want to make sure that all the locations have phone in numbers here so that is a beneficial feature. Um, the other screen um, that we'll go through here, I just want to point out, is the holiday and exception date tab. This is where you can actually tell the system that this are the days that these jobs, this is by job by job uh, set up, um, these are the holidays for this job, and when someone works this job, instead of working um, at a regular rate or the regular rate type that's out there, we want to map it to a different rate type. So once again, my example earlier was if they work Christmas Day, instead of having it work go to regular, 
and it caused all of us on the phone call today to go in and have to change that rate type, we could actually just go in and change the um, I have the setup automatically do the changing for us in advance or as, as the punch occurs. So there's no not, no confusion later, no extra work on any of our hands to go in there and change those rate types. So once again, this is called holiday and exception dates because typically it's around the holidays when we do this. But you may have an exception to that rule. You may have a um, a date on the future. Maybe it might be um, tomorrow. You know, it's Friday the 15th and you have a training day and everyone's required to punch in that day and when they punch in you wanted them to go to a different rate type called training as an example we could go in here and set that date up in advance or all those training dates you may have in advance and every time they clock in the system automatically punches them at this other rate rate type now once again this is a by job and it affects anybody who works that job that day now to to your advantage as well we do have an import for this so if you have a lot of exception dates in 2016, 2017, and so forth, we can actually go through and um, um, you know upload those into the system for you in advance. So that's another thing that if you're interested in doing that, let me know, and I'll be happy to assist you with that. All right, so kind of wrapping up, two things I want to show you that are different um, for, so kind of that was the granular security piece. So that's going to give you all the different things you can change. Now the only two other things that changed with this update were the views, and some of you have already noticed, and a few of you have sent emails wondering, wondering what happened. Um, but um, regardless, this is um, just something um, that you'll notice that on the time card view, you now have this little section that's different. If y'all remember back right in here, you used to have a link, just a, a little link uh, that said uh, view details. And for those that uh, use a mobile device on here, like our landscaping team, um, you may have had a link there that said uh, view map. Well, all those options, those links have been rolled up into a little arrow here that when you click on it, the menu pops up with those options. Now, don't fret for the view, those that use the view map option. The view map, just for everyone who, who's kind of wondering what I'm talking about here, the view map here allows those punches that were um, collected via the um, smartphone app, the uh, mobile punches. Um, those are, the back end of that is it's called geosensing that controls the function out there. So the system always basically knows where you're at, where you're punching in via this geosensing and GPS coordinates. So the view map option here allows you to see where exactly that employee was when they actually punched in on their mobile app. So in that case, you'll lose an option here called view map for those punches. Now, the rest of them here, split time card, still allows you to split that time card if you need to do a, a split. Um, not to be confused with the auto split, very similar. The auto split occurs on its own automatically. The split time card here allows you to split the total time amongst a variety of jobs. So, for example, on this particular screen, I'm going to erase my uh, markings here. On this screen, let's look at... Uh, Mr. Rosales' time here. You notice here that he punched in, and I'm just going to hide. I can't, I can't draw a square or a big rectangle today, so I'll leave it at that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and erase that as a marking. But for his record there, you'll notice that he has a total of four, point, uh, four hours and 45 minutes. So what would happen is if he just punched into that one job, and you know, after kind of reviewing the time card, you realize he really worked another job in there, and we should actually split two hours to the other job. What you can do is the split time card function is going to allow you to take that total four hours and 45 minutes and code two hours of it to another job. So instead of having to go and create a new entry or do anything, split time card is the proper way of correcting that scenario. So once again, if an employee clocks in, puts all his time to one job, that split time card allows you to manually go out there and break it out without doing any other additional work. The other option on there is view audit that allows you to see the audit trail so you can see the time the employee punched in along with any um, changes that were done to the employee's time record that's going to be under view audit. And then lastly, view allocation allows you to see all the allocations that have occurred with that timeline. And once again, this is in the time card view. 
Now, someone asked me uh, after the call yesterday, goes, why do they make these changes? This doesn't, I don't understand why they need to make these changes. One of the things they're doing for all of us is trying to get us ready for version 7. Right now we're on version 6 of uh, Blue Force. Version 7 will be something that we'll be looking at down towards the end of the year, nothing anything soon. Um, but towards the end of the year is kind of where we're looking at doing this. And at that point, there will be a lot of enhancements to Blue Force that are going to make things a lot better and a lot friendlier for us when we're going to navigate through the system. I won't share all those with you just yet, but there's a lot of nice little features coming up um, in that new version down the road. All right. So last screen I want to show you here today is the uh, more the uh, time sheet view. Uh, actually, this is still the time card view. Sorry. The time card view here, I forgot to tell you, is the status was changed. Um, when you've submitted or when you've approved um, a time sheet, the time card always updates, so it lets you know that that time card entry has been edited or no longer available. But one thing that's changed, and I don't know, really, you know, it's one of the things that ePace changed. You notice that whenever it's submitted or approved, time sheet has been abbreviated just to simply TS. And then uh, otherwise, time sheet is open is what's always showing on that screen. Not a big enhancement, just wanted to make, bring that up so if you see that, you don't uh, get concerned. And the last thing I have to show you today is the timesheet view. The timesheet view allows you to, allows you, uh, obviously, to see your timesheets in a summary format. But the one thing that's basically changed on this, you used to have all these little filters right here under this little area that I circle in green. Um, that little area has changed, and they've actually put it all under one additional filter. So if you use any of those filters, don't fret. You can still get to them. They're just in a different area. All right. So with that, um, that is kind of the changes that have occurred in our in our um, in our recent upgrade last year uh, last week. And um, we're just want to share those with you. And like I mentioned, some of these changes, um, especially the granular security, will be flipped on, and you'll be able to get into them next week. That way, you can actually go through and and maintain a lot of this stuff uh, on your own. Um, one thing I want to bring up to everyone is we have an upcoming training um, next week. Um, that's obviously we're going to have these webinars next week as well, but we're going to have a special training session on Wednesday, 1 p.m. Central, that's going to cover just the manual timesheet. Um, we have some questions about that. We've had some concerns, so we're going to go through and just do a more in-depth session. Probably won't last more than 30, 45 minutes, but nevertheless, it's just a session I'm going to offer to everybody. And then the following Wednesday, we're going to bring back that scheduling uh, webinar again that I had yesterday. So those that missed it or need just a recap or refresher or just have some questions, that'll be on the 27th at 1 p.m. Central as well. So with that, I just want to say um, support-wise, you've got um, some options of support. So as I always mention, please do us a big, big favor. Put in a help desk ticket for any support issues you have. Um, Tiana and I often find ourselves, we, we have, we're in a day with a lot of other emails from other things we're involved with. And obviously, uh, if um, we get an email and it gets buried in there, we don't want to overlook it and, and cause any delays on your, your part. So please put a help desk ticket. We're monitoring that all the time. Um, if it's an after-hours issue, obviously, you can always call ePay support directly via email. I um, mean, contact them via email, or you can obviously contact them via phone and they'll be able to help you as well. So with that, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. I hope I um, was able to share our new uh, little changes and, and um, ch you know, updates on uh, the overall process of uh, granular security. Hope that it's beneficial for everybody. Um, we'll do an ePay Tips and Changes webinar again next Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Central with new topics. And uh, keep on the lookout for your ePay update out there on Monday, and I'll address um, those topics in that email. Until then, we talk again next week. We'll uh, hope you have a great uh, Thursday, and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you so much.